Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to this week's episode of the Do It Now show. It's the absentee version with two of our regulars missing in action. But a true trooper that she is, Colleen O'Brien has agreed to come here with me for today's topic, which is why you may be your worst enemy and what to do about it for your entrepreneurial success or something to that effect. So, Colleen, welcome. Welcome to our little online, uh, uh, I don't know, what would we call it? Our little online parlor room. Ooh, ooh, that sounds a little risque. Uh, a little game. old school, too. Very, very 19th century. Uh, it is very know. 19th century. I just had a flash of the 19th century. You did catch that. That's very good. <laughs> So, so That's what happens when you're super you. intuitive. You are, you are indeed an entrepreneur, a healer, a teacher, a certification expert, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, I think you're well qualified to participate in today's fun and games. Well, thank you. Uh, I'm also brilliant live uh, and was available, which I think was We're really Availability is really important. <laughs> Hey, Cassandra, I see I see your uh, your little mm -hmm. message there. Awesome. Uh, looks like she's having some issues. I don't know, Dr. V, if you she's can having help issues. her Cassandra out. Cassandra often has issues on Fridays. I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. like, we had her on the Marketing Happy Hour. We had a number of different things. But if you can click that link, Cassandra Jolif, there she is, Jolif, Jolif, a little relief with Jolif. Yeah, yeah, she's, maybe, she's maybe Cassandra, if it. you... Um, it's looping, well... Yeah, shut down the fresh. browser and open it up again, and yeah. then try it, try it from there. Uh, that is, phones. that sometimes, is, sometimes oh, I'm, works. Yeah. I'm reaching way back to when yeah. uh, I was in uh, IT, and, and uh, you mm -hmm. know, it's like, oh, this isn't working. Well, like, shut it off and, sh and turn it back on again. There you go. <laughs> So you worked in IT? This is something I didn't know. Yes, I worked in IT. That was my first uh, like real job uh, out of school. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So and then I actually got a master's degree in computer science. And right wow. around the time I got that degree. Uh, oh, good. OK, thanks, Cassandra. She says she's going to try that. So awesome. So hopefully we will see her in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, so I had I had a career in IT. And then uh, I was an on camera actress for uh, quite a few years, and which meant that I had a lot of part-time, uh, you know, soul-sucking, pay-the-bills kind of jobs. Uh, and then uh, at the end of that uh, was when I got into the healing space, mostly to try and resuscitate my acting career. Uh, so yeah, so I have a wealth of experience to draw from. Uh, but uh, we, if we want to stay on topic, oh uh... yeah, sometimes. sometimes. <laughs> yes. I like the yeah. fact that you were the it girl. To start with, so. yes, I was the it girl, and yeah. I, you know, and sometimes my hair will flip. I did one yeah. Halloween, actually went as, uh, um, not everybody kept calling me Mary Tyler Moore, but it, it was, uh, um, uh, what's her name? Now I can't, now I can't think of it. Uh, but yeah, because my hair flipped out, and I was just like, you know what, I'm just gonna go with it, and and I built the whole costume around the way that my hair hair was going. On. Well, there you go. <laughs> So, so I guess so. Gig, so now I'm going to go back on topic, which is sort of like the idea of being frenemies in your business, that you may be your own frenemy, and how to go from enemy to more friend. Ooh, so. that is that is a great redemption arc right there. If you want that to get into the redemption. drama of it, <laughs> my redeemer lives. Something yeah, but yeah, I mean, when when you first uh, mentioned this, I mean, I would say the, the big reason why we ourselves are our own worst enemy is because the easiest person to talk you into anything or talk you out of anything is you. And in fact, the only person who is going to allow you to change where you are is you. So you really have to know yourself. You really have to, uh, you know, be very, very honest with yourself if you want to overcome being your own worst enemy but it's really it's so easy to lie to yourself and justify it right oh yeah i'm a, I'm a good liar for me i won't lie to, i won't lie to other people all that much other than most of the, maybe white lies or so but most of the time i tell myself things that i want to believe yeah exactly and a lot of times it's just because you know it keeps us safe right like oh change is gonna hurt or, or maybe success is going to hurt, right? The fear of success is a huge thing that'll hold people back. Yeah, people don't believe that, though. But most people believe it's, the, it's the, always the fear of failure. But the reality is that, you know, with greater success come more comes more responsibilities. And we just want to avoid responsibilities sometime and run away. So. 
I mean, that is kind of why I started, you know, working for myself. I was like, I don't want to be accountable to anybody else. But then I'm not even accountable to myself. Like, it's really great for me to be like, you know what? There's no consequences if I don't do this thing today. It's the slip slippery slope of lack of consequences. Exactly. Exactly. Now, the flip side of that is when I'm inspired in the middle of the night to do something. Yeah. No one's going to stop me to do it. I don't have to, you know, go break into the office to actually get it done. It's all right here. You were in the office breaking years ago or was that so? No, I mean, well, you know, and being being in IT, you usually had 24-7 access to right. to that stuff because, you know, if a server was down or something, like somebody had to go in and fix it, you know, physically, like, uh, you know, do the thing. So, uh, yeah, no, usually if I had to go to an office, you could I could usually get it whenever I wanted. Um, but th that was, you know, sort of the talking myself into getting there when I wanted. You know, one of the reasons I left IT was... I um, I had this job where I was uh, had to take antidepressants just to get out of bed in the morning and mm -hmm. would systematically burst into tears two blocks before I got to the parking lot for that job. And I I didn't see a way out. Right. I mean, I could go to another job, but it would still be in that same field. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I really just, you know, had to leave leave that industry completely and and you know really take care of myself and my own health because you know it's just not worth it but that is a totally different thing right like i mean i kind of was my own worst enemy there because i was forcing myself to do something i clearly was unhappy doing uh but i i you know it forced me to get help like find somebody else to help me with another perspective and and that's a real key mm -hmm. when when you're procrastinating is you know have have a support group have a business coach have so have a healer help you out with you know what what are the subconscious reasons i'm not doing the thing uh you know or even get an accountability buddy i mean i will say i've got plenty of friends who are really awesome who have you know volunteered to be my accountability buddy because i know the things to do I just don't always do it. And I turn them down because I know they're so much like me that they'll talk me into or out of whatever, something else to do that's more fun. And we still won't do the things, but we will have time to talk to one another and have like a, a weekly meeting. <laughs> so if you're going to get someone who's going to keep you accountable, you know, make sure that they will keep you on task, keep you on topic and, and call you out on your BS. Like when you're just sort of, you know, because a lot of us will say those things to just be like, nope, I know this is what you're going to hear. It's not true, but I know it'll it'll get you to back off. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, little, yeah, because this morning we had a nice little community support group, I thought that went, went pretty well. And I think that uh, everybody pretty much was uh, revealing what they were doing, making declarations, either asking for help or giving help. And I think when you can form those little communities, that also helps. You don't have, it doesn't have to be a single person. It could be a group of people who create sort of this expanded mind or uh, consciousness, which helps to keep people in the groove and get momentum. Yeah, the group dynamic is really great because it, it, it allows for a lot more creativity, right? Mm -hmm. So, let, you know, if a number of you get stuck, there's always there's somebody's always got something to toss that ball to. Um, and yeah, yeah. The, the So thank you for setting up that that group uh, today. It was a spur uh, of the moment. It was last night. I said, we haven't done anything in a week. I better do something. And you did it. You did it then, right? You could have procrastinated. You could have been like, you know what? It's a holiday weekend. It's kind of late for me to call people in. And and you didn't. You're just like, nope, I'm going to do it now. And it, ca it came about. It's, it's by, by the way, I mean, it's somewhat atypical of me, but I think I've turned a new leaf in the last uh, year or so, probably the last, maybe the last three months in particular, which is I've been famous for being consistently inconsistent. And part of it, I have to tell you, started with a TikTok video challenge where one of my coaching friends had set, laid down the gauntlet, which was you, you're going to have you do 90 days of videos every single day for 90 days. And I set things up such that I even had my phone with an alarm that went off at uh, was 11 o'clock, but it gave me a half hour warning at 1030 at night 
that I have to create this video and my day will not be complete unless I create it. In fact, sometimes I would panic at 1155 at night because it still wasn't done, but I'd throw it up there anyway. And that habit for 90 days continued such that I think I'm somewhere, I've lost count now, but I think I'm somewhere around day 160 in a 90 day challenge. <laughs> and that's just, it, there's something about it now that inculcating this new habit in both conscious and subconscious, my day is not complete without doing at least one video. And you're you're really committed to the that short form video and I am and now. I wasn't done. before. <laughs> I didn't I didn't realize that it was a challenge that got you that got you going on that. Yeah, it was a challenge. And I think so, but but it was it was a challenge from the outside, which resulted in an inside change. And because it, it's really interesting because they've all lost track of me and what I'm doing. And people are saying, you're doing what? I said, yeah, I've gone beyond the 90 days. And I think Sue, my coaching friend who started it, she was just really baffled that I was continuing beyond because she herself would take breaks occasionally. She had like several weeks off and then went back to doing TikTok to kind of revive her account. Um, but I just, I feel like my day is not complete without, you know, putting something out there, even if I would think of it as being crap. I still feel that I've at least made the effort to put something out into the uh, cyberverse or metaverse or whatever we're going to call that verse. So anyway, that was my little thing. Is yeah, I'm well, perfect. yeah, I mean, and done. Yeah, done is better than perfect. I mean, perfectionism yeah. is something else that that can uh, that can hold you back and make you your own worst enemy. Um, yeah. And so I don't know if you need to talk to Cassandra. It looks like she I don't know. It's like, it's like she'll try. In. Thanks. So I've seen her. She's appeared on Facebook. She's appeared on YouTube. And I think she's back on Facebook. <laughs> so she's there. She's going to try. If All right. Like you don't succeed. Try, try again. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, going back to the challenges, that yeah, yeah. that is a great way to form a new habit because you do have the community around you. You you know, there's there's uh, you know some accountability, some consequences for not doing it. Um, you know, and not, not everybody makes it all the way through a challenge. No, you know, in fact, so most, most do not. I think I was one of three who made it through the 90 days and we're talking from hundreds of people. Yeah. Yeah. So. It, it's, uh, it, it's funny that when I heard that, cause I, I had did a video challenge, uh, a couple of years ago and, and, you know, it was just a 30 days, you got your weekends off. It was, it was really easy for me to make it to the end. And uh, then I was, I tried it again, like the next year or whatever, and all the prompts and stuff were the same. So I was like, oh, I've already done this. So I did drop out. But when I, when I heard that with other challenges, you know, some people, I guess they're trying to, to, uh, you know, whoever's running the challenge is trying to make sure like, oh, this is going to motivate you to stay in. And, right. you know, sometimes when it's like, you know what, like, this is a lot. And I'm like, you know, if you are expecting me to drop out anyway, then I'll drop out. So it kind of had the opposite effect on me. Uh, but it is um, it is a framework that can work for some people, uh, you know, to kind of form that habit, right, to get over. Because now it's more difficult for you to not do it because you have programmed yourself. Yeah, I, program to always do it. I get sweaty palms at the idea now of not doing it. So it's it's more it, it's it's the fear of failure in so far as the failure to produce content not the fear of looking stupid online or put, producing something that's not perfect. Right, right. It's not It's not about a visibility thing or it, it's the more of uh, you're breaking a promise to yourself of, yeah. you know, of not, not doing the thing that you've been doing for a hundred years. Yeah, it's actually years. making yes. myself accountable to me, which is kind of the ultimate accountability. Exactly, exactly. And that is where, you know, just knowing yourself and being brutally honest with yourself can really work. Now, the flip side of that is you can go to the other extreme and beat yourself up. Yeah, that's true. And that's not helpful. <laughs> I'm beating myself up right now about Facebook because I can tell you right now, I'm trying to send Cassandra a message on Facebook mm -hmm. and it's throwing me into the business portion of Meta for whatever reason. <laughs> Um, oh, I know why. Because these profile things, you know, select your profile. I was on a different business profile earlier. And yep. that, that's why it did. But I mean, I have too many pages and too many profiles, not personal profiles, but business. Ideas. Right. There's, there's too many places to keep track of. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, it sounds, it looks like Cassandra is looking for you to resend her. I am uh, resending. Okay. Don't you, perfect. Don't you worry, little darling. 
He's doing it now, just I'm, like the show. I'm doing He's doing it now. We're not we're not stopping for for it no keeps one. Looping as a, a loop, Lupe. Lupe means wolf, I think. No. Uh, no, Volpe uh, is wolf. Well, Volpe. Yeah, I was thinking Lupe is a, just a more of a. Isn't, isn't that loopy, like gal. crazy? Like. Well, lupo, yeah, lupus in Latin is a wolf because I remember from my right. Latin classes. Right. Okay, Cassandra, that's in for you if you can dive on in. Try your phone if you need to because sometimes that's worked. I know you have problems with your computer, but uh, we'll get back on track here as I try to find the correct window. There we are. Okay. Whew. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to put, I didn't want to put that link in the public chat to everybody because we'd have, you know, everybody and his kid brother pouncing in. But by the way, too, we know most of you are not watching this live. You're Most of you watch it on the replay. And so if you can give us the hashtag replay, and if you have any questions, comments, suggestions for future topics, you can put it down below in one of the 10 places where some of you are now watching, including Twitter, but not Twitch, because we've learned our lesson on Twitch. They were they were not that nice to us, in fact, particularly to John. So we stopped with the Twitch, the son of a Twitch. All right. So back to being your own worst enemy. I think um, I, the thing about lying to yourself, I think, is quite brilliant because we tell ourselves certain things or we retain some beliefs that may not be serving us well because we've always had these beliefs why would we want to change you know so that that which is familiar even though it might be i would say negative or not constructive we often drift towards the familiar because it's comfortable even though it may not be the best thing for us well and ultimately you know your subconscious just wants to keep you safe yeah. Right. So what is known is, uh, you know, OK, I don't have to account for any variables. This is how we know it works. So we're just we're just going to stay here. And, um, you know, that, like you said, it may not be even what you would choose consciously. Right. You know, and so when you're fighting yourself, when you're fighting your subconscious, it that's when it gets really, really difficult. You could do affirmations all the time. You could, you know, you know, try to willpower through it. But if you've still got this subconscious program that is there, uh, you know, and doesn't know how to keep you safe or, or whatever other outcome uh, the, the program is, is doing, uh, it doesn't know how to do it another way. It's, it's going to keep sabotaging you, sabotaging whatever changes you're doing until you can really tap into that, that belief and reprogram it. And sometimes those beliefs are really wily, really tricky, really deep, and do not make any logical sense at all. Mm hmm. Like Wiley Coyote? When you use Wiley, that's what I immediately think of the road. <laughs> I no, I think Wiley in terms of uh, almost like squirrely, like, you know, when you're trying to, because there's there's a technique in in uh, the healing modality that I use right. uh, where you you sort of interview the subconscious and you try to find like, wh what is the anchor point here? What is what they call the bottom belief? And so sometimes when you get really close, it sort of is like, oh, no, look at this shiny, bright, shiny object over here. No, I'm going to hide. I'm going to dart. I'm going to hide behind this bush over here. So it because it really doesn't want to be found. It's, you know, and that's when you really kind of have to get very clever and and run it. And and then, you know, so that you can latch onto it and find it. So uh, so that's why I use the word wily, because sometimes it really it's really kind of a roller coaster sometimes. What figuring out what what is really causing all of that. I don't know why my, my mind drifts to a lot of little squirrely things like Wiley and Sons. I'm thinking that you're going to be published. That those 36 or 43 pages are going to be a much bigger book produced by Wiley and Sons. So, <laughs> well, I mean, I could make it a bigger book if I just changed the font, right? Like just make just it a bigger font. font. I like the idea of one word per page with area for notes. So <laughs> I think that would do great. Perfect. Well, you know, I did consider doing it every other page so that there could be page notes like, you know, each facing page could have notes. Yes. But I thought, uh, you know, that would I, I, I thought as a consumer, I would feel like I'd be cheated because, you know, I could always just buy another notebook or, you know, yeah. wouldn't necessarily, you know, I sort of have to take notes when you when you read the book. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do you recommend certain books to people or, or different type of maybe audio books or any sort of affirmations or things like that, or is it more of taking a deep dive and knowing yourself and then replacing those limiting concepts or the bottom belief that you talked about earlier to become less of an enemy and more of a friend to yourself? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, really look at part of knowing yourself is knowing what you're attracted to, right? Like I, I'm a theta healer now, but you know, there were other things that I was doing. I was doing EFT tapping for a while there, you know, I would just get acupuncture weekly for a while too, to help myself out. And so, you know, things will, you'll be attractive to certain things. They may help you for a while. And then you're, you know, you're like, Hey, okay. I feel like I've, I've run the gauntlet of this, or, you know, it's not working as well for me. So keep searching, you know, cause you are changing and evolving as well. Right? Like a lot of times we just want to find like this is the answer this is it this is what i'm going to do it's going to completely change my life and i'm never going to need to do anything else again as long as i live in this physical reality and that's just not the case um you know in fact just last night i found that i had the belief that i can't make a living as a healer and i'm like that is so basic how did that s sweep by me right like I'm, I'm pretty sure that's in my book like, it's probably one of the first things in my book about being a professional healer. Like, how did that slip by me? But there it was, right? And, and you know, remained hidden for a while. Uh, so, you know, it's a lot of it is just finding what you are attracted to. Now, personally, uh, I love meditation, you know, because it just and sometimes it may take you about, you know, a good 20, 30 minutes of just sitting there. And, you know, just observing the thoughts and then, you know, just expanding. And, and then, you know, you'll either get that inspiration or you'll be like, oh, that's it. That's the thing. Uh, you could also speed that up a little with, um, you know, like a visualization, right? Like, this is a great manifestation visualization. You're like, okay, what, what is it that you want? Like, you know, just and really turn it up, right? I'm sure you've done this, Dr. V. Well, you got to crank it. You got to crank it up with emotion, too. Just the, the crank it with emotion. Like what? At, like even like what? What is the temperature of the lighting? What? What is the air like? You know, what are you wearing? All that stuff, right? Yeah. And what does it feel like right now. Right. Right. Now, first of all, you got to know what you want, right? So clarity is really the first step. And a lot of people think like, oh, why wouldn't you know what you want? A lot of people don't know what they want. So uh, knowing what you want, turning that up, and then seeing where the emotion just sort of takes. Like, where is that, like, clang? You're like, oh, no, I can't have that, right? That's really where you can get that clue. Be like, oh, that's where I am, uh, you know, tripping myself up. Yeah, tripping yourself up. Uh, Cassandra is still saying she's having technology issues. I'm <laughs> suggesting she use her phone because ah. in past instances when we have tried to get on live streams or just chatting it was the the computer was being persnickety but the phone was very lovely so yes. let's see what yes. happens yeah um, so other things you can ask yourself yeah. are you know what is what is the worst thing that could happen if you know i actually took the step or did the thing or had what i wanted you can also flip that around what's the best thing that could happen and that is a great way to kind of get the fear of success out there right like oh like you said if i if i have like a uh, you know a ten thousand dollar a month oh well then you know the tax man's going to come after me or you know everybody's going to look at me different in my family or you know whatever uh i had the weirdest belief that came up last week. Uh, I didn't want bigger class sizes because I believed that I had to be a mother to my students. And I didn't oh, want wow. 20 kids. I just wanted like two. I didn't really want one kid most of the time. So <laughs> it's like, no wonder people are signing up for my classes. You don't have to tie all their shoes or feed them, by the way. It's just, it's just a digital event. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. But subconsciously, and again, it was keeping me safe. I was still doing the things. There was a number of times I'm like, ah, I don't really feel like doing that. Or, you know, I'd be like, that's not going to make a difference. Or I'd just be, you know, spinning my wheels, like whatever. Uh, you know, so part of that was more of a manifestational thing uh, in terms of a block. But uh, yeah, like you will find weird, weird stuff uh, that is blocking you. Uh, another time I had, like, I was, you know, uh, fighting, getting into a routine. And I was like, well, where is this coming from? Like on this like subconscious, like uh, it was like a history level. So like a past life level. Oh, well, routine is how they enslave you, right? Like that's how they control you. So <laughs> like, oh, okay. Like let's, let's clear that. I don't need that. That's not serving me now. It might've served me in some past life with, you know, like ancient Rome or whatever, like, but you know, I, I was equating freedom to lack of routine which meant lack of consistency, which meant lack of being able to serve people in, in you know, a, a really powerful way. 
Yeah, I think we have this resistance. One way to be your worst enemy is that you go out of corporate America, for example, out of uh, you leave Cubicleville and you have this freedom saying, well, I'm never going to, you know, have a schedule or a routine again. And what you find, like what I found is that creating some degree of structure actually allows me to be more creative because I'm more productive in my creativity. But that was just a major mindset shift for me, like a structure, schedule, what? I don't want that anymore. I was seeing, you know, 40 to 70 patients a day and I had that schedule filled and my staff, I hired people to keep me moving, just to keep me moving and moving and moving. So, you know, four, what was it? It was three full-timers and three part-timers. So essentially four and a half people keeping me focused and in my lane the entire time. And that's why the practice just flourished is because I had set up the system to keep me under control. But they would have to stop me. They would have to stop me though sometimes because I just love talking to people. I'd listen to their stories and I knew I knew way too much about people's lives. Everything from the the uh, the positions when they were romantic that got them into trouble to you name it. And so I became almost like the parish priest, you know, with an unofficial church of chiropractic. You know, and so I mean, I know way too much about way too many people, and I just try to keep that compartmentalized way in the back of us. Yes, I'm very, very glad you did not find a way to monetize that because that uh, yeah. immediately sounds you like terms blackmail. Of blackmail, or you know, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the obvious way to do it. Right? The obvious way. <laughs> Oh, oh, it looks man. like you've got a hello from Cam. Thanks so much for watching oh, live. Cam. Cam is the man. I should send Cam the link because we talked about getting back together doing this. Cam used to be on our live streams on a regular basis. Did I? Oh, there you are. There's Cam. There he is. What's up, Doc? Keep on rocking. Yeah, I was expecting you to have a carrot in your mouth, Cam, when you said that there. So more like Bugs Bunny. But yeah, Cam is an expert in... Um, in email marketing and you know sort of the make money online type thing but he's really 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 top notch in email marketing creates a number of courses and other things and he was one of our, our four we used to have a quartet of people doing what we called the marketing happy hour which has subsequently morphed into we renaming it as the do it now show because we found that a lot of people get a lot of marketing advice out there and nobody would do it so we insisted you do it now yeah yeah, same. Like I know, I like I'm not ready. I'm not gonna sign up for another course or anything. I know all the things. I'm just not doing the things. Are you doing the so, things? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's why I was like, well, maybe I need to hire, you know, a coach to keep me on task. And then of course, most of the coaches in my price range are like, oh, we needed it a group. I'm like, no, no, no. The group's not gonna like because it's too easy for me to just not show up in the group or just you yeah. know like whatever. So um, yeah, yeah. It's um, it it's a common uh thing i i find right like it's um you know even even when i i'm very honest with myself and i know myself really well there's still plenty of stuff i i i don't do right like we all know I missed that just, last word. there's plenty of stuff we don't like you know that oh, i don't stuff. Do. okay I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm trying to keep it pg-13 today yeah yeah oh yeah sorry was i was i in our no 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 you didn't do anything bad i think i was just <laughs> hearing something that really wasn't there so. well you know it's funny because you did you did compliment on on my vocal quality and i have done some voiceovers in the past but every now and again i would get the note to like speak more sloppily well we we just disappeared for a moment which yeah intriguing i'm wondering if i wonder if once again at&t's high speed gig type of uh internet connection just crapped out on us, which it has done periodically. And which really bothers me. It's like uh, my friend, John Paducek, who's usually on these live streams, he'll say that he had fine internet connections until he switched to this one gig, you know, service. And then it just, it just disappears once in a while. And it, to the point where I think an engineer came up to him and said, uh, you know, what you really need to do is go, I would say, go down to the 300 instead of being at the gig and your, your problems will disappear. So. Yeah, there's uh, yeah, there's an awful lot of pieces to uh, providing uh, internet service. So I am sympathetic, but at the end of the day, like I'm a customer and I just want it to work. Cassandra's all over the freaking place. I, I'm hoping that's referring to trying to join us as opposed to uh, 
some sort of existential issue here. I yeah, Cassandra, I appreciate your efforts to join because we're yeah. we're almost a half hour in. Yeah, your persistence, uh, your persistence is is extraordinary, and I do appreciate that. But boy, if we ever do a show together, we're going to have to figure this out in advance, I think. But uh, she was fine getting on board today. I think just had a little bit of a crackling sound or so, or occasional dropping of audio in our little supportive entrepreneurial community that we have on Zookbook or the Book of Faces. So she's exactly trying to join her sincere apology. Well, no apologies are necessary because technology can be a bear. Notice I didn't refer to a female canine. So can't keep it a PG. I don't know. I think I think NC 17 is perfectly fine. <laughs> <laughs> no one under the age of 17 is allowed period not even with an adult so that's not our audience anyway we tend to skew a bit on the more mature wiser side <laughs> yeah cassandra's like pg baby yep yep <laughs> oh man dude i don't even know if i could name off the top of my head a pg movie i mean so much as pg-13 or r oh that... uh the latest Pixar movie Lightyear is rated PG. Is I know because really? we saw it. <laughs> it's the movie, it's the prequel, not the prequel, really. It is the movie that Andy saw back in 1995 before he bought the Buzz Lightyear toy. Interesting premise. Yes. So a different uh, yes. actor playing the voice. It's actually, I think it's Chris Evans instead of, uh, gosh, who was it? It I was uh, oh, Tim Allen. Tim Allen. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, no, that's the wrong show. So, <laughs> Tim Tooltown. So, yeah, I, I did not really, I guess, well, I guess most other Pixar films are just straight up PG, right? Maybe. Rather than PG-13. Think, yeah, one of my favorites was the, what was the big emotional one? Or Toy the, Story the, 4. No, that was, well, that one was a real tearjerker. That's true. Because, you know, my, my stepson and my wife had both, you know, really loved all the Toy Stories. And Toy Story 4 was just like, wow, this is the best ever. So that was, that was something. So, no, I'm thinking of the one, the emotional, the emotional one, the one with the emotions with. Um, oh, 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 Inside Out, where they were personified. Thank you. Thank you for jogging my fading memory. No, I'm, I'm going to say my excellent memory. Um. <laughs> But yeah, Inside Out was still one of my favorites too, especially the ones blowing his top. Anger, anger was one. Of the best. Oh, wasn't that Louis Black who uh, voiced that? Yes, perfect, perfect for the voice of anger. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, so that you don't get angry with us, we're going to stay on topic and probably wrap up pretty soon. Yeah, because we're at thirty-three minutes. That's not bad. Thirty-three and a third was my favorite uh, type record, of LB. record speed. Yeah, it's spinning. You spin me right round, baby, right round. Like a record player. Yeah, this is this is so if Cassandra and I ever do a show together, it's gonna be it's gonna be difficult for her to corral me. So she's she's in some ways, kind of like you, sort of a muse for my offbeat humor. So anyway. well, you know, it, it whatever whatever works. <laughs> wordplay the wordplay of the day is a okay with Dr. V. Um any additional thoughts or things that you wanted to cover about, you know, how to become not so much your enemy, but maybe your best, oh, best friend. That came out too. I, I don't know. I started with frenemy and I've got a best friend. Yeah. Uh, I guess just believing that it's possible and, and loving yourself enough to do that. And, you know, cause a lot of us are, you know, like push, 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 go, go, go. Sometimes taking the break, taking the breath and not doing mm -hmm. the thing right away is actually going to be more successful. You're going to be more sustainable and keep that more consistently. So as important as it is to do it now, and sometimes done is better than perfect, have that discernment of knowing when to rest and when to go. Yeah, and work on that sense of self-worth. I think that's the major thing that really has stopped me over the years from doing certain things, which is this, uh, like I'm not good enough or not being feeling like you are enough. And the truth is, a lot of people are just way too self-involved to really care whether you're good enough or not. They're too worried about whether they're good enough. True. They, you know, they're, they're not paying attention to you. And even if they were, they're hoping you fail. So, you know. <laughs> right. They're not. They're, so. no, one's, no one's judging you as harshly as you are judging yourself. That is true. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Okay, Sandra. It was still the PG. I thought she had something else. Okay. So. 
<laughs> with that in mind, this would actually make a nice little podcast now that I think about it. Just download this audio and get Colleen, you know, more more of everything in the in the omniverse metaverse curse. Oh, I'm I'm multiversal. Like there's You're there's already a version there's already a version of me that has already done this podcast and is already, oh. you know, yeah, yeah. You're but anyway. How did she like <laughs> No, is <was> like <laughs> And how do you like it now? So, that's the question. Yes. All right. So we will be back uh, next well, week. Well, at least Dr. V will be back. I will be back. Now, because I am the one piece of consistent face and voice that has actually appeared since March of 2020. So has it really been that long? You've yeah, had a rotating we, guest chair for that long. John John Paducek and I had actually well, no, he's relatively consistent except when it's R V camping season. That's when, you know, he just disappears to the woods and and not even Eli uh, sorry, Eli, Elon Musk's uh satellite system has will bring him to us today. Um and LTE in the wilderness is not that much to speak of. Yeah. So I, so he and I started this, in fact, a little backstory quickly. He, st we started live streaming together. We found each other in the chat of a live stream of a mutual coach. And I made a little comment. He made a little content comment and it was Kismet. Kismet. We connected in there and then we started saying, well, you know, we started meeting up a couple of times and said, why don't we do live streaming? So for, for every single day, sometime in March for six full weeks, we live stream every single day so 45 days of live streaming in a row and then it got to be a little bit much and then we just sort of backed off to twice a week then once a week and then here we are in the multiple morphing in the uh i'm stuck on metaverse now because everything appears to me on meta in this interface but here we are here we are in living the live stream dream in fact at one point we didn't even call it the marketing happy hour i i referred to it as the it, with an homage to rocky horror picture show it was don't dream it stream it so that was my that was my reference you know and then you know that you know you can tell the kinds of things that i like just from that reference so anyway um thank you so much for stopping by and rescuing me from myself colleen i think that's uh probably one of the most valuable things you did being such a trooper and appearing at the last moment and uh, helping me to create some momentum in what i'm doing and hopefully you have benefited from this interaction as well. Yeah, this this was a good time. Thanks for having me. Thanks for taking a chance on me. Uh, and we thank, did yeah. have an ABBA. We did have an ABBA uh, cover band here last weekend for the concert in the park. So, oh, and the only so thing that they, the only song they didn't play, was "Take a Chance on Me," so, huh? Which which was also the uh, wedding song uh, that my wife and I danced to here in Coronado. <laughs> Take a chance on me. <laughs> So appropriate. So <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing so much of you and your personality, Dr. Thank v. You. Uh, and thank you for everybody who shows up to, uh, you know, who's here live and uh, who will watch the replay. Uh, drop us a comment, say hello, uh, and look us up. Uh, you know, you know, you probably already know where Dr. V is because, you know, he's streaming in all the places. Uh, you can find me at my website. You can see that there, ColleenO'Brien.com. I spell Colleen with an A, O'Brien with an E. And uh, yeah, you can sign up for my um, email list. You can find out all of, you know, my other social media stuff. All the things uh, are right there for you. I th I'm glad you took the helm at <laughs> in that particular <laughs> moment to give your little CTAs out there because I'm sometimes like, okay, am I done now? Because it's time for me to eat and in my intermittent fasting. So, <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't need your stomach grumbling coming over the mic. So uh, I think it's a great time to wrap this up so you there can go are. eat. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So thanks everybody. It's been a blast. It's a wrap. <laughs>